Sometimes the threat to a good guy with a gun is another good guy with a gun. In this video, I'm going to share with you four strategies that are going to help make sure that you don't become a victim after a self-defense shooting. And I know that number four is going to ruffle a lot of feathers out there, but hear me out. Hey, what's up, Warriors? It is Jeff Anderson from WarriorLife.com. And by now, you've heard about the tragic story that's come out of Arvada, Colorado, where an active shooter, 59-year-old Ronald Troik, gunned down in broad daylight a 19-year veteran of the police department, Officer Gordon Beasley, as part of a hunting trip that he had for police officers out there. Now, as we know, the best thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And fortunately, there was a licensed concealed carry gun owner that was in a local Army Navy store, John Hurley, who did hear shots go off, went out to intercept the active shooter and managed to shoot him and put him down. Now, we don't have all of the footage from this yet. This is still an ongoing investigation and we don't really know all of the events that happened. But what we do know is that another responding officer did come upon the scene and did fire upon John Hurley, seeing him and not knowing if he was the good guy or the bad guy, did shoot him and kill him on the scene there. These are two heroes that are dead and it didn't have to happen this way. But I see this a lot where gun owners really focus so much on training down at the range with getting that tight shot group, but really don't train enough on the actions that they need to take with their responsibility, with their handgun from a legal standpoint, but also from a tactical standpoint after a shooting to make sure that you do not become a victim. And so what I wanna do is I wanna share with you four strategies that you can use to make sure that you do not become a victim after a self-defense shooting. Check this out. All right, tip number one is do not draw your weapon until you positively identify a threat. Now in an active shooter situation especially, that might seem counterintuitive to you. If you're in a mall and all of a sudden you hear shots fired and there's people running past you, you might be one of those people that wants to run toward danger and you might have your weapon drawn going out hunting for this shooter that's out there. The problem is that you might not be the only one actually out there hunting for an active shooter. There could be responding police officers, responding security. You might even be coming across somebody who has a gun drawn. You might identify them as what you see as a threat, but that could be another licensed concealed carry owner. And they're actually looking for somebody who is the shooter as well. So you want to make sure that you don't become that target by having your gun out. If you're this person and you're looking for a bad guy out there and somebody else with a gun does come up and sees you, they might mistake you for an active shooter and start shooting first and asking questions later. Now, one thing you can do in this situation to make sure that you are ready is if you do any sort of off body carry. So if you're a woman and you have your gun in a purse, then you might have your hand inside of the purse. For me, I carry a sling pack with me and it has a special compartment in it that I can just quickly Velcro out. And my handgun is inside of here. Now, without showing the weapon, I can have this in front of me. I can have my hand on the weapon so I can quickly engage the target if I need to, but I do not want to show my weapon until I actually have to use it in self-defense. Now, tip number two is after you have neutralized the threat and you've made sure that everybody is safe around you, you want to make sure that you holster your weapon. You don't want it to be out invisible. Now, we don't have all the film footage yet from the Arvada shooting, but what we understand so far is that the responding officer that came had seen John Hurley there holding the AR-15. Now, Hurley, we assume, after he had neutralized the active shooter, had picked up the rifle to get it away from the person. Maybe the person wasn't dead yet. Maybe they were, maybe they were still actively able to uh, it, it come back and, and fight back. But there was Hurley holding the weapon. Now, responding officers do not know. They're coming into a dynamic situation where they don't know who the good guy is and who the bad guy is. So you have to assume that they might think that you are going to be the bad guy. So once you make sure that the person in front of you that you've neutralized is not able to attack back at you, that you're no longer in danger, holster your weapon and make sure that it's in there. Again, you might have responding, other responding gun owners that come out there. And if, again, if they see you, even if that threat is down, all they're going to see is a person with a gun and somebody lying on the ground bleeding. Don't let that person be you that becomes the target in their eyes. All right, tip number three is after the shooting, if you are instructed to do something by a person of authority, probably gonna be a police officer, then you do exactly as you are told. 
Now, there was a situation in 2018 where there was a gunman inside of a church holding a bunch of people hostage. One of the people that was being held hostage managed to tackle the gunman and get him down and get the gun away from him and was holding the gun when another police officer came into the building and saw him there. Now, the police officer, again, not knowing what was going on here, told the gunman, who was the good guy, to drop the gun. Instead, that person slowly put the gun down to the ground because he was afraid that if he dropped the gun, the gun was going to go off. The police officer shot this person because he wasn't doing exactly as he was told. So if you are told to drop your gun by a police officer, you drop your gun. You do exactly as you're told. Now, a word of warning here is that there could be another concealed carry gun owner that comes upon the scene and, again, thinks that you're a bad guy. If that person says, drop your gun, guess what? You drop your gun. You do exactly as you are told because that person might have the same exact response as that police officer in the church. In fact, they have less training than a trained police officer coming to the scene. So do exactly as they're told also as long as you can identify that they're actually a good guy also. Now, your feeling is going to be you want to explain to everybody that you're a good guy. No, it wasn't me. It was him. It doesn't matter. Put your ego aside. Go ahead and drop the gun. Okay, I can't wait to see all the comments that you have for me on tip number four here. So, is there a way that a police officer responding to the scene or a legal gun owner that is responding can quickly and visually identify you as the good guy with the gun without you even saying a single word? Well, this brings up the concept of should you have readily available a concealed carry badge that you can pull out and put around your neck or have on your belt that might provide a visual cue to everyone around you that you are a good guy. Now, I can already hear you on the other side of the screen here. Look, I know that you think that the only people that actually have these badges are egomaniac wannabes, but it is possible that they could have a way for people to identify you. Now, I'm, saying, I'm not saying to identify yourself as a police officer. I'm not saying impersonate as a police officer. I'm not saying doing anything illegal whatsoever. I'm just saying that can it actually work? Now, this is such a controversial topic that I actually did an entire video about the pros and cons of actually having one of these badges. And before you comment, go check that video out now. I'll go ahead and put the video up here on the screen. Check that out before you comment because I might just change some minds out there, all right? And until our next video, this is Jeff Anderson saying prepare, train, and survive.